Welcome back to the Battle of the Dunes experience, where 4x4s take on some of the biggest dunes in the Namib Desert. This episode is a special one. The drivers that will do battle with very large heaps of sand all have a physical disability, so this battle will be even more challenging. The battle was different in other ways too. Not only was the challenge made up of drivers with disabilities, the base also shifted to Mayop Bay, a 220 kilometer drive south of Volfus Bay. With every Battle of the Dunes challenge, the organizers donate funds to a local charity or organization. So this battle started at the famous Dune 7 venue, just outside Volfus Bay. There, the organizers hosted kids from JJ's Daycare, a local facility that looks after kids with disabilities. All the kids were taken for a ride on June 7's quad bikes, and they certainly had plenty of fun. To cap it off, event organizer Werner Skarp, assisted by Matthijs Roots, handed over a check courtesy of Standard Bank Namibia for 10,000 Namibian dollars to JJ's Daycare to custodian Kim Koch. It's quite a way to drive from Volfis Bay to Mayop Bay, and this journey of just over 200 kilometers is a bit of a challenge in itself. So before the convoy sets off, the tires are deflated to one bar. This ensures that the tires float more on the sand than drive in it, which is exactly what you want in soft sand. Driving on the beach, there are sections where the Atlantic Ocean has swallowed up the beach, leaving only a thin sliver of sand for the 4x4s to drive on. In other places, rocks and boulders line the beach. If you drive a modified Jeep Wrangler, you can go straight over the rocks. If you're in a standard Nissan hard body, best you avoid those rocks. And sometimes that sliver of sand is just not wide enough, as the ocean laps at the wheels of the 4x4s. In other areas, again, the beach is so wide, it's like driving on a highway with 50 lanes. You may think this place, since it is a desert and all, is utterly deserted and void of any life. Well, you'd be mistaken. Cape fur seals abound on this wild coast, with plenty of jackals in attendance too. These jackals survive here purely because of the seals, in a cruel but fascinating twist of the circle of life. This coast is also known as the Skeleton Coast, the mist that descends on this coast, which causes ship captains to lose their bearings and run aground, this is the Edward Bolin. The German cargo ship was en route from Wolfis Bay to Cape Town. Well, enough of all this R&R. &R. Let's get down to the business at hand and meet the drivers. First up, famous Afrikaans singer Matthijs Roots. Hello, I'm Matthijs Roots, and uh, from South Africa, Pretoria. It's my first time truly in the desert. I've been to Wolfsbein and Swakopmund before, but never experienced, never expected to actually go and drive a dune in a 4x4 like that. So it's, it's, it's uh, I'm kind of uh, excited, but a little bit scared as well. We drove 270 kilometers south from Wolfsbein Bay to, to get here, and the dunes get, just get bigger and bigger and more isolated, more isolated. And we're at the campsite now, and. Uh, and hopefully I'll, I'll get it right. Hopefully I'll be able to, to manage the, the controls. We, we, it's an automatic Jeep, so we, we just did a bit of a, a home hack just to be able to drive with, with normal walking sticks, but it seems to be working fine. So I, I just can't, can't wait. The deals are waiting they, in the back there, and they look really, really huge. The trip also included amputees Brian Style and Pietrus van Breda. Hi there, I'm Brian Stahl. I'm from the East Rand. Um, I'm here to compete in the Battle of the Dunes. It's my first time here in the desert. I've got some 4x4 experience from last year's Bridgestone Club Challenge. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm really excited to, to give it a bash. I drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee, the 3 litre CRD. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, I couldn't make it here with that. But we were also, some of the obstacles we were all going to do in one vehicle, so I'm not too worried about that. Hi, I'm Pietras from Radar. I'm from Tabazimbi, South Africa. Um, got invited to come on the Battle of the Dunes. Uh, borrowed a Jeep from Armand Scarp, it's a 3.8 Jeep Wrangler. And uh, I expect that we're going to have some fun and the vehicle will be able to do, to do all that I expect of it. 
It's day two of the challenge and time to stick some sponsor stickers. And with all the branding affixed to 4x4s, tyre pressures were taken down to 0.8 bar. Since everybody was faffing about checking tyre pressures, wheelchair-bound Mateus Roots decided he'd better check the tyre pressure of his ride too. Apparently tyre pressure is, is everything. So it's just a matter of... I think it's better, but I think I still need more power. <laughs> All jokes aside, it was time to get a bit more serious as expert tour guide Jacques Delport from Uri Adventures laid down the ground rules. Dune driving can be a dangerous game if you don't keep your wits about you. Time to head to the shops. After the break, Mateus rigs up his driving aids and the lads go big in the Namib. Welcome back to the special edition of the Battle of the Dunes Challenge. OK, so you may be pondering how on earth Mateus Roots, who is paralysed from the waist down, is going to drive a 4x4 over the large heaps of sand. Mateus is a resourceful man, it seems. The spaghetti stuff is actually tieable. And I just put it on the, on the brake lever, and I just tied, tied around. I've got brakes. And now for the, for the accelerator. And voila! Mateus has fitted the automatic Jeep with his crude but effective driving system. Time then for some sand driving. We ride with Mateus and Werner in Werner's Jeep. And he's looking commendably relaxed in the passenger seat, considering the walking stick driving system. They arrive at the first small climb. We have to go from Petrochet to Boe. And then dry. And then dry. But that doesn't go far. No, it goes on two. So we must go back by slow. Yeah. Look at the little bit of Petrochet. And Matthijs has a go. But he doesn't have nearly enough momentum. Mateus is not one to give up very easily, though. So he lines up again. Well done, Mateus. So what was the secret there? Uh, just a bit quicker on the throttle, and then it was there. My co-pilot's kind of nervous, but I don't know why. You know, as you'll see, my controls are holding. <laughs> right, so after that battle was won, it's time for Brian Style in another one of Werner Scarp's Jeeps. Brian's first run is more of a how-you-doing affair as he feels out the sand and the jeep. There's a dash more speed for his next attempt, but it would really work much better in four-wheel drive instead of two-wheel drive. OK, so with four-wheel drive engaged and with a splattering more speed, but oh dear, he still hasn't got enough momentum. Attempt number four then, and up she goes. Well done, Brian. Something to get used to. It's a lot different than riding on rocks and sand as in last bridge, last year's bridge sand. But it's it's fun. It's something completely different and getting used to the car as well. Time to tackle the first June challenge proper. A big, steep, tough old June. Here's Beatrice with Werner in the passenger seat. This is a tricky long obstacle up a slip face, followed by a tight left turn, then down into a bowl. And up and over to the end. Well driven, Beatrice. That was a grand job. The organisers decided that because of Mateus's driving sticks, it would only be fair if the contestants used the same vehicle for the obstacles in the competition. Next up is Brian, also in the automatic Jeep Unlimited. Let's attempt this first obstacle.
Brian is still finding the momentum is your best friend concept a bit foreign. Most 4x4 drivers know that they should always drive as slow as possible and as fast as necessary to prevent damage to the vehicle and flora. This more speedy approach in sand does take some getting used to. Time for another go. And this time he makes it up and down the big old dune. And despite a last minute scare on a steep slip face, Brian makes it through. Well done. Mateus and his walking stick driving system are next. Ah, he nailed it. Good job, Mateus. I mean, initially, I I didn't thought it was that, that, that bad, but when I got to the top, my co-driver said, look at the right, there's a slip face on the right, so I don't know why he said that to me. Just to, I don't know, but, but, it, but it's fine, you know. I, I just have to get used to full throttle uphill. You have to give it gas, otherwise the sand is so thick now. It just doesn't go, but I, it's amazing. It's amazing to think that you can actually go down that dune. Unreal. Time for another break. On the other side, the lads tackle a mother of an obstacle. Time for the lads to go bigger, higher and longer. Mateus is first. This is another long obstacle. It's up a huge pile of sand. If you can make it over. Not enough momentum there, Mateus. Mateus has a second try. And makes it up with precision.
And once you've made that, it's down a slip face. And crossing your path to go up another huge pile of sand. The walking stick driving system did a grand job there. Pietrus is next. Let's ride with Pietrus and co-pilot Werner through this obstacle. And he nails it too. Time then for Brian, who's found it tough to adjust to the throttle wide open driving style required in the Narmin. But it seems Brian has come around to using a heavy right foot. <laughs> He's done it too. All three gentlemen have made it up, down, and through this tough old challenge. They all have done exceedingly well. After that long and tough challenge, the boys were treated to a well-deserved lunch in the Narmid. Deflate your tires. And if you still get stuck, tip number two, call a friend. With the Narmid conquered and Verdner's Jeep still intact, it was time for prize giving. So in the nature of the competition, the lads all received a Battle of the Dunes trophy. A recovery kit and a snap strap courtesy of Opposite Lock. It just goes to show what you can actually do when you put your mind to it. Well done gentlemen, you really conquered the Narmid. Yeah.